We are activating your unique self-discovery one show at a time. The Orchard of Wisdom Self-Discovery Podcast at your fingertips. Just waiting to inspire and invite you in discovering just how awesome you really are. And how to navigate through life in joy, enrichment, personal abundance, in mind, body, spirit, heart and soul. All the people we bring you are here to serve you on your journey of life. Do enjoy our next show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Mental Health Awareness right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my wonderful repeat guest is David Richmond. We had a wonderful conversation last time he he was here. We actually did talk about, you know, the cycle of lives, and he is a cyclist, and we were talking about the benefits of, you know, really that cycle uh, of making life better, helping us go through trauma, finding those ways, and, you of feeling the importance of people and conversations around us and i please invite you to go back and listen to that show because it was filled with some wonderful abundance but today we're going to be talking about something different we're going to be talking about how trauma disrupted your life's journey and how expressive writing workshops can actually help you release the trauma uh, face it be empowered by it and go through it to the other side and uh, you know it's um, person who likes to write articles and blogs, etc., coming from a family with um, a brother who is an author. Uh, it's really, really important that we do find our way to express ourselves because part of that trauma is keeping everything in, isn't it, David? You know, when you've got everything locked inside of you, it starts gnawing at you. It's like mice at the wires and things start shortening out. And, you know, so you need a way of just being able to download it. And a lot of people just don't know how. And so you've got this beautiful expressive writing workshop, which is a way to show people how to release, let it all out there, spend Mm -hmm. it, spend it, right? And then see it for what it is. And actually look at it and go, you know what? Yes, that happened to me. Here it is, black and white in front of me. But look what I've become because of it. I am not the victim of the trauma. I'm empowered by what the trauma has helped me discover about myself. Welcome back. Well, thank you, Sarah, and I appreciate that. And that's um that's a lot of information there, and uh, and and a lot of expressive uh, a lot of expressive thoughts on on the topic. Yeah, it's you know I um uh, you know there's so much to, to unpack there, but but writing can be therapeutic, right? As so can art, mm-hmm. so can yoga, so could cooking, so could hanging out with grand grandparents or grandkids. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a lot of things that can be therapeutic. Um, And so the problem is how much time do we give and energy and attention do we give to our therapy, to our self-care? And especially with regards to the deeper uh, traumas that we, as you say, you know, keep inside for sure. um, How how much attention do we give to those? And that's the area that I've been focusing on for quite a while now, uh, trying to empower people with additional tools that will allow them to kind of change the conversation that they're having in their head about the trauma. Yeah. Um, You know, it's like if you have a sore on your arm or your hand and you keep rubbing it, you're worrying the sore. The sore doesn't have a chance to heal, Mm -hmm, right? And mm -hmm. if we have this trauma that, you know, it it keeps gnawing at us, um, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the next thing you know, you are completely encompassed in the trauma. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we kind of even forget what kind of caused the trauma in the first place. We're just so caught up almost in the drama of the trauma. And it's, it's it's a hard place to be and it's a hard place to get out. It it, it really is because what most people do, right? Most trauma, I mean, look, people endure all kinds of trauma throughout their lives potentially, but most trauma that really affects us, uh, should we have the opportunity to escape whatever, maybe severe circumstances cause that trauma um, is trying is, is, is boxed up. Even if that box continues to grow, but it's boxed boxed up and kept up in our head. Mm -hmm. And we have these interior conversations about this trauma. um, But it's an inside voice. It's a voice that we don't, we don't hear. We don't interact with the voice. We don't, um, we don't try to understand the voice, we don't have a conversation with it. So uh, 
So that's where the problem lies, is that we have two voices. One is the voice that we use to interact with the world. And the other voice is this inside voice that's de dealing with our demons, dealing with our, yes. our traumas. And, and it's having a different conversation than the conversation that we have with the world. And so an example of that is, you know, let's just say you were abandoned as a child um, because uh, in some form or fashion, let's just say, for example, you maybe had uh, a parents that were verbally abusive and that, that kind of uh -huh. isolated you from them and made you feel abandoned. And you kind of have that trauma, you know, locked up in your head and it's an inside voice that deals with it. And every time you come into contact with someone who you might get close to and you're, you, you have this fear of abandonment, right? Your outside voice kind of interacts with that person in that situation in one way, but your inside voice is having a whole different conversation. Yeah. It's saying, oh my God, I know this person's going to leave me. I know I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. I know that, oh, you know, this is going to happen again. And, and you do this frenzy of activity and dealing with the trauma, but it's all in here. Yeah. And it, you, you never get the chance to kind of get those two the voices to have a conversation with themselves so that one, you could bring your true authentic self to your outside voice. And two, so you could use your outside voice to kind of help heal that little inner inner voice. And so if you can get those two to have a conversation, that's what, in my mind, what expressive writing does mm -hmm. is it allows us to have a open conversation with our outside voice our, our interactive voice with the world and the inside voice that we have in our head there's two different frequencies going on mm -hmm. there's an inside one that is actually screaming and there's another one that's kind of calm and rational tell me all about it but they can't meet until they get onto the same wavelength mm -hmm. right and when you get into that writing groove into the writing flow and you just allow don't preconceive right allow let it come out of you then both of those voices can get onto the same wavelength and they can hear each other mm -hmm. but it's a way of kind of coming into that same level because when this one is screaming it can't hear a calm voice right it just can't how do you bring right. that one down when it is getting into a rhythm where at least at first the up and down i i, I hear you i hear you i hear you okay i need to calm down to mm -hmm. actually hear you. And that's one I think the hardest things about trauma is the calming down enough. Because most of the time it's saying, why, why, why is this happening to me? Why? And the other voice is trying to tell you, <laughs> but we can't hear it because we're too busy on that high pitch. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's a great way to explain it. And, you know, there are other activities that are therapeutic in nature as we talked about, but I just don't know that many of them, other than probably close to having a really skilled and um, experienced and licensed therapist, mm -hmm. um, be able to kind of understand those inner conversations and try to help you get some peace with them or understanding or reconciliation or lining up the frequencies or whatever. Um, aside from that, I don't know that anything besides true expressive writing is actually therapeutic in nature. And it's been proven through uh, several studies uh, that um, that expressive writing actually does have a very measurable health benefits as well yes. as psychological and emotional benefits, reduced heart rate, better sleep, less days missing work, um, even restorative powers, uh, healing powers. So um, uh, it's so important for people that um, are interested in um, getting past their trauma, are interested in yeah. understanding it, reconciling it, um, uh, putting it into the proper perspective, mm -hmm. um, you know, are, are that are interested in taking a hand in their healing mm -hmm. rather than figuring out more and more ways to overcome or to hide or to live in spite of or whatever. Um, if we can come to a better place of healing, then, I, I, you know, just like life becomes less burdensome. I, yes. I certainly a less, uh, a less emotional over the traumas that we've experienced. Because who hasn't? We've right. all experienced them. I mean, why do we, you know, um, I mean, an artist can, can draw a picture where they're paying and everything in it, but it's open to interpretation. So you're not maybe seeing it from the artist's point of view, you're seeing it from your own, which mm -hmm. is great, wonderful, but it doesn't tell the whole story. 
you know, um, uh, singers, you know, the breakup songs, how many, you know, <laughs> talking right. about the pain of, um, as I said, I saw the Elvis movie last night and there's one there when uh, Kennedy was killed and he, he wrote this song, you know, about what are we going to do about it in that moment. And it is those, those emotions that allow us to put pen to paper. And of course, where the singers then take it to the next level and oh, then, sure. you know, bring it out in music. But it's still the words had to come through them before the music came through them. The words had to mean something to put the music to it. Mm -hmm. And really when we're looking at is that it, when we get those words down on paper, it becomes our own music, our own rhythm. It becomes something that's more fluid in our own life. And whether anybody else reads it or not, it becomes a better understanding of ourselves. And if somebody else reads it, it becomes a better understanding of who that person is, where sometimes mm -hmm. we cannot face to face articulate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no question. A absolutely. And, you know, true expressive writing, which a lot of people don't know what expressive writing is, right? There's many forms of writing. There is, um, you know, traditional writing, there's, there's nonfiction writing, there's narrative nonfiction writing, there's, you know, creative writing, there's whatever how but but to understand what they mean is one is one thing uh, uh expressive writing is a term but specifically meant for um for expressing emotion mm -hmm. on a piece of paper and it's really traditional expressive writing is supposed to be between the writer and the paper shredder mm -hmm. it's like get it out yes. express your feelings express your emotion and then you know, crumple it up and throw it away yeah. now, which is great. That's, that's a, a unbelievable therapy. Un, unbelievable, unbelievable, right. To understand how you feel about something, to vocalize it, to then read it allows you a different perspective on the issue and a different way to have that, that conversation, that self-conversation. Um, what I try to do is to take narrative writing a couple of steps. I mean, uh, um, expressive writing a couple of steps further because what I want to do is what you just alluded to is sometimes we want to share yeah. the writing with someone, uh, not just with ourselves, not just with the paper shredder. Sometimes we want to write it down for our future selves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, some, right? Sometimes we want to write it down as a legacy item for mm -hmm. family. Uh, sometimes we want to write it to someone to maybe heal a relationship mm -hmm. or to reconnect uh we want to maybe write it uh to tell our story so expressive writing can be more than just a listing in a journal that gets closed away and boxed up never to be seen again or thrown in the paper shredder um it can serve other purpose and if yes. there is another purpose to be shared then what i think people need is they need tools to understand mm. how can i be more empowered to communicate with myself in a in a more meaningful deeper level a more connective level and that's what i try to teach empowered i mean i love that word mm -hmm. you know we talk a great deal about power 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 but you know i think empowerment of yourself and then being inspiring and invitational to others through that empowerment is massive you know it is mm -hmm. the power that we seek and that empowerment of self of being able to write something down and being able to look at it afterwards. I mean, I've written things from 20 years ago, 21 years ago. I've gone back and read it and thought, who wrote this? I really connect with it. And then it's my name at the bottom. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, it's a, right. because you, 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 you it, I suppose in a lot of ways, express where I write, you know, where, where I'm at or what I feel at the moment. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's sometimes that revisiting the revisiting of it just even to look at that's how i felt them but look where i am now mm -hmm. look how much more empowered uh, or empowering i am right now and like yep. you know a lot of people you know it, look at it then leave it never look at it again no i think when you can look back and this is i've got people who share stories that are horrific things that never should happen to a human being and they're sharing that story and they can share that story over and over again because they're not attached to the story mm -hmm. right it is their life it is who's they've they've become you know what's made them become who they are today but they can talk about it without trauma and without pain because they spent that emotion and now they can tell right. the tale without being emotional about it 
Right, because when we face the issues that affect us, the issues that are traumatic, when we mm -hmm. face them, we face our fears, we face mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, whatever, then they, they, they obviously become lessened, right? We, we yes. can talk about that all day long. They, they obviously do. What we don't often do is we don't often outwardly, openly, with our outside voice, we don't we don't um, face those traumas very easily, very often. It's very hard to do that. It's very it's very hard. How how do you because you live with it inside for so long? You converse with yourself in a different way inside to protect, to deal with, to hide away whatever the reasons are, and become really good at that. Yes. So to face those things, there's only one way to face them, and that is to to bring that inside voice out mm -hmm. and converse with it. The only way you yes. can converse with it. And so what I I, I love the new uh, uh, digital age of uh, virtual meetings because when when I do expressive writing workshops in per person, very different than when we do them in in uh, in, in you know virtually. Mm -hmm. Because in person, we're seeing everybody look at us. We're a little yes. self-conscious when yes. we read, when we share, or whatever. But here, we're all just two-dimensional. And it's easy to imagine that everybody is just a figment of our imagination and we can go on with our business. But traditional expressive writing, you write it, you close the book, you walk away feeling better. I, I think like what you mentioned earlier, if we can read it. Yes. Now now we can, that's a different voice. If we mm -hmm. read it out loud, mm -hmm. that's a different voice. If we read it out loud, looking to ourselves in a mirror, that's a different voice. Yes. And if we read it out loud in front of others and to others, that's a different voice. And what I think we we, we do, and I, I talk about this a lot about these different voices. An example that I give is if you're at a buffet, okay, you have an inside voice telling you, you know, hey, Hey, uh, 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 you know, fat little kid, you know, you, you used to be made fun of as a fat little kid. And so you, you shouldn't go up and grab that extra piece of cheesecake because you're just a fat little kid and everybody's going to look at you and don't you feel stupid and whatever. And your outside voice is like, Hey, you know, I'm, it's no big deal. It's a piece of cheesecake. I'm going to go grab. It. Well, imagine if you took your grandson up to go get yeah. that piece of cheesecake and he grabbed it and you're like, hey, look at you don't want to be a fat little kid, do you? Right. You don't want everybody looking at you that you're doing like we would never talk to anybody else the way we talk to ourselves inside. How many and times if we are talking to other people like that, then yeah. definitely what's inside of you needs to be spent <laughs> right. before you impose but, it on someone else. <laughs> right. But how many times do you beat yourself up inside? Um, and you don't need, sometimes you don't even know it, but the times that you do know, how many times you beat yourself up inside about the way you handled something or the way you didn't handle mm -hmm. something or what happened to you or why, what, what, why it was your fault when it really wasn't your fault, but you think it's your, I mean, we beat ourselves up. You know, if you think about it, um, I, I love, love doing a, an exercise where I ask some, I ask the people to think of two times in their childhood. And I go, one time is, I'd love for you to think of a time when you won an award okay, mm. and you got to get a certificate. And I don't know, maybe it was the principal of the school that gave you the certificate. Maybe it was the camp counselor. I don't know. Maybe it was a coach or something, but you were amazing. I go look at yourself and, 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 and put yourself in that position and, and remember what it feels like. Okay. And then I go, let's contrast that. Let's think about in your childhood when something really, really, really bad happened because of something you did. Could have been an accident, could have been something on purpose, could have been just whatever. But I go, just, just, just put yourself there and try to feel those emotions. And so at, when, when everybody's kind of dialed into that, that, that exercise, and it's, it's not that easy, but when people are dialed into that exercise, I say, now explain to me, like when you see the person uh, getting the award, it talked to me and everybody sees them there. Everybody mm. sees, sees themselves third person. Yeah. Like I, that's somebody getting the award and yeah. I don't really like, okay, I see it and I feel it, but okay, but I'm watching it. But when it comes to the, the bad thing, mm -hmm. the negative, th they felt it. It was them. It was first person. We lean into our negative stuff because that's really who we are and we kind of see the third person good stuff yeah. 
because that's some other person. That must have been a mistake. A yes, one that's, our in, yeah. that's our inside voices. Yeah. And so um, what I what I try to do is I try, try to say, no, let's first person the good and let's kind of yeah. third person the bad so we can understand. Let's see that thing more on a stage so we don't, so, so, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. these are the kind of exercises we do. I said to you beforehand that, you know, I'm, I'm writing my own little book right now. And uh, and somebody commented to you because I said, you know, um, um, I've done my own therapy through the years and it's that I can talk about things that happened, but I don't have to kind of go into the pain and the anguish of it. You know, that is up to someone else who's reading it of what they feel from it. You know, I can talk mm-hmm. about what it is and it, no, no, you've got to put the pain and the suffering in there. And I've, um, why do I have to go back to pain and suffering for <laughs> you to get it? <laughs> you know, because it's like, uh, right. you know, the, if the words of what happened to me weren't impactful enough, you know, what do you want? Blood coming out of the page? <laughs> you know? That's pretty, pretty funny. So it's, I think at some point it's when you can get to that stage where you, as I said, you can talk about something and it is no longer the blood coming out of something, mm-hmm. you know, it mm-hmm. is, then it is, uh, then you know that you, you've spent that emotion and you can look at that award of was it deserving. I did right. deserve it. Right. And uh, I worked for it. You know, this has been mm-hmm. a journey towards that. And that's really who I am. And this other is what happened to me. And when we look at what happened to us, we need to change it to happen what happened for us. Mm-hmm. Because that's when we discover our strength and our courage and our abilities. And actually just how awesome, which I prefer the word flawsome, we really yeah. are. Flossom. <laughs> we're awesome. all flawed we've all got flaws right. let's celebrate right. them right and just be awesome, awesome i love that in our i love that <laughs> that's a fantastic word i love that it is word. a lovely word and yes it's yeah. a, i i can't remember who who gave it to me or, or where i saw it but i think it's very apropos i think one of the things about society is this always trying to strive to be perfect in whose eyes yeah right you know it, it, you can break every record in the world and be perfect for a second and somebody will pull you down the next you know it's the embracing our imperfections and Mm -hmm. that that make us unique being able to say yes i did make a mistake then but i didn't know any better then i do now so what i do now is what counts Absolutely right. You only know what you know when you know it. And yeah. You didn't know. You didn't know what you didn't know before. You, you no. just knew what you knew then. You, you don't. You, you know. So now that you know, you could be better. Yes. And you know, one one of the things that's um, you know, that's super important with expressive writing is understanding that there is some distance that's covered between mm. your trauma and you. And what we're trying to do is just kind of lessen that distance. Mm. And and reshape the conversation, right? Figure out new ways to connect and, and shorten that distance and understand that, well, I didn't know mm-hmm. then, but I know now. And exactly. you know, one of the things that I, that I often think about is that we're just not taught how to, how to do that. No. And, you, you know, when you think about it, uh, a lot of people are equipped to deal with certain things. Um, you, your, your parent or your grandparent taught you how to cook. Mm-hmm. Um, your your dad, your your other older sibling taught you how to navigate the educational world to mm. maximize your opportunity, or taught you finances, or gave you a skill, or um, 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 instilled arts in you, or whatever. But a lot of times we don't have the opportunity to have that happen. With regards to writing specifically, we don't. We 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 we're not taught how to write. We're taught how to spell. Yes. We're taught how to form sentences but we're not taught, taught how to write or express and ourselves, express ourselves. Well, certainly uh, absolutely where I was leading is how to express ourselves. So um, that's, that's what I try to teach mm. people how to do is to, is to go further, give me more, talk about the emotion uh, of it uh, so that we can understand and have the deeper conversation with ourselves. So that's the fun part of it. You don't have to be quote, quote, a writer, an author. You know, this is whether somebody else reads it or not, that is not what it's about. Mm-hmm. It's about we know for a fact that if you leave that trauma inside of you, it will create dis-ease manifesting in disease, mm-hmm. mental disease, physical disease, um, 
social disease, social mm-hmm. dysfunction, where we see so many of the people that just go out and shoot everyone. They're trying to shoot their pain that they yeah. project on everyone else. And it's because, and, and people, well, I didn't see that pain inside of them. No, because they never knew how to express it. They mm-hmm. never knew. And this was just literally the burst of the bubble. And this was their way. And nothing, <laughs> nothing right about it. But we can actually understand in some ways how, you know, the people that get angry or swear or shout or this or that, in a way, they're trying to release the pressure of the anguish that's going inside of them. The ones that are silent, that have got all that trauma inside of them, if they don't find an outlet to release it, it -hmm. is a ticking bomb waiting to be released some way or other, either through disease or through some sort of interaction out there that's not gonna benefit anyone else. Yeah, but but, but also even, even, uh, you know, not enjoying life or out of our relationships or, are connecting with our true authentic selves so we right. can be the best that we can be there's a lot of ways that trauma manifests itself to limit us from becoming who we're going to be and you know i i could give a you know 100 stories of people in in um in, in expressive writing workshops that actually learn how to overcome a piece of them that is preventing them from becoming their best selves. And the mm-hmm. simple, a simple one that comes to mind right now is I had this, this wonderful woman, it was a cancer organization that I was working with, a big expressive writing workshop. And one of the prompts that I gave them was worry. Like, let's talk about worry for a moment. And I empowered them with some tools on how to have deeper conversations with themselves, how to express themselves on a more emotional level, how to see what they're feeling rather than just say what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. And on uh, this, uh, on the t- subject of worry, this one woman wrote this wonderful uh, uh, piece about how she was worried about everything, mm-hmm. like everything. Mm-hmm. She was she from morning till night. That's what she was worried about. And I asked her on part two uh, if she could solve for worry, how would she get a better night's sleep? And so we talked about that for a little bit in her writing, and for her a visual came to her is that she had kept a a pillowcase that her grandmother had knitted for her up in the closet for many, many, many years. And she said, what you need to do is to put grandma's pillowcase on your bed tonight so you can get rid of all your worry. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a, a wonderful analogy. And, and so I said to her, can you read that to yourself tonight? And can you actually please go get the suit, mm. the, the, the pillowcase, can you actually put it on your pillow? So most of the expressive writing workshops I do are um, a series of them. Mm-hmm. So a month or two or whatever later, uh, we we're back at the same organization doing another thing. And I, and I saw her and I said, oh my God, so I got to know mm-hmm. like what happened with grandma's uh, 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 pillowcase. Did it give you a, a worry-free a sleep of night? You know, I nice sleep. And this is a woman who was dealing with you know, very, very, very heavy uh, uh, mm. medical issues, emotional issues. And she said, you know what, David? She goes, I put grandma's pillowcase on. First, I read my letter to myself. Then I walked to the closet. I got grandma's pillowcase. I put it on the pillow. And I said, so you had a good night's sleep, right? She said, I haven't had a night's sleep with an ounce of worry since. Right. And I'm like, wow. Yes. How she, amazing is she that? gave it away. She put she it away. It yes. Yeah. 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 And so she, she, she never, she never would have expressed mm-hmm. her worry. She never would have potentially come up with a way to have a solution for some of that worry, which never would have allowed her to give herself yeah. some therapy. And she gave herself beautiful therapy. I mean, how incredible is that, that, that she can now have a worry-free night's sleep night after night after night. How great is that? That now became a safe place for her. She wakes up in the morning without yeah. the first thing, you know, worrying, tapping her on the shoulder. And, you know, as a, uh, I, I have somebody uh, close that is a worry ward. And I was pointed out, if you look at everything through the eyes of worry, you'll find much to worry about. Mm-hmm. But if you take one thing on and say, I'm empowered to do something about this one worry, and just concentrate on that. And mm-hmm. as you can resolve or empower that, 
you'll take the next worry and the next one rather than trying to be overwhelmed by all the worry yeah. that you feel crippled. Yeah. And you maybe know, maybe that person is justified in their worry or maybe yeah. they're not justified in their worry, but why not try to find out which which, which is it? Right, exactly. Write about it, understand it more and figure out some way to become at peace with it. Yes. You know, the other thing is um, a lot of people that have had a great deal of trauma and feel unworthy, which really, where, where does the trauma do? It, it makes us feel, nobody loves me, I'm unworthy, I'm unlovable, you know, I, I'm no good. You know, all of that dialogue goes on inside of you. And we close our heart off. And we don't know what joy is. Hmm. You know, we don't know what the exuberance of life is. We don't know how to get out there as carpe diem sees the day. Right. Because our hearts need to be open to actually understand the immersement of life and what life can give us. And people who have been traumatized, that's one of the first things they do is close the heart off. I don't want to be heard again. The, you know, I'm going to protect my heart. I'm going to close it. I'm not going to let anyone in. But then you're also not letting yourself out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's finding a way to put a crack in that and open up yeah. that door. And the more you go through the process and the more you let that heart out, all of a sudden you find, wow, this heart is incredibly empowering. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives people the ability to love themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. I mean, isn't that what we want? We want people at the end of it and go, I've been living my life feeling unworthy, but that was somebody else's imposition on me. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. How do I feel about myself? Because the only person that really counts is you in your own life. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about you? How are you empowering you? How much do you love you for when you step into that love of self? And I don't mean narcissism. I just mean love of self and love of life. That exuberance and vibration of that love resonates out and becomes that inspiration and invitation and warm embrace to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very well said. I, I love it. And, and so how do people go about mm -hmm. doing expressive writing? That's the thing. And it's kind of like if you never, like I, at one point in my life, right, you, you know, this, we talked about this before, I, I never had run more than across the street. And right. then all of a sudden, you know, now I've done, you know, a, nearly a couple dozen Ironmans and a mm -hmm. bunch of 100 mile runs. And I've, I've biked, you know, 5,000 miles across the country and around the country. So I've done, you know, crazy, crazy things, but I didn't know how to, how to do it. So yes. I had to learn. Yes. Right. Right. I had to, I had, if you've never been to the gym, you can't just walk into the gym and understand what to Pick do. Pick up the you weights. Gotta, right. <laughs> you got to be taught when yes. it comes to expressive writing, what do you do? And so. First step. Uh, yeah. What, what are the steps? Right. And so there are many steps and it's, and it's not a, let's sit down and figure it out in 10 minutes. Right. You can't become. Yeah, a, a regular yoga practitioner after mm. one session, you can't become a master of meditation after reading a 15 minute blog. So there it's a process and it, it's a process of understanding um, um, why you're writing, who you're writing for, um, what are you going to write about? How are you going to go about your writing? When, where, right? It's about talking through some of those issues allowing and, and, and then what kind of voice you're going to write mm. it in are you going to write it in a first person are you mm -hmm. going to write it in a third person are you writing a letter to someone so you're going to write it second person you this and you that so um understanding those basics and then uh, i like to talk about um tell me more like going deeper tell me more tell me more tell me more um so <clears throat> instead of saying you know um i was hungry you could say something like, you know, um, it had been eight hours since I thought about food because I had so much worry. My stomach was growling and the noise was, 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 was so loud. It was echoing in the room. And I finally thought to myself, Oh my God, I'm so hungry that the difference between I'm so hungry and that visual. Yes. So I try to teach people, tell me more, go deeper. And instead of so that's a that's a that's a facet. And then I try to uh, explain to people and take them through exercises to teach them how to explain 
the the more behind emotion than just labeling it. Yeah. So instead of I was scared or I was angry or so and so did this to me and it really hurt my feelings. No, let's go deeper. Let's t- let's tell me more. Let's let's go many many levels deeper so we can understand you know, really what's the inner conversation that's going on with your head about that because when you think about I don't know, let's take another example. Let's just say you're in an abusive relationship. You don't, your inside voice doesn't go, wow, that person hurt me. Yeah. That's not what your inside voice does. Your inside voice talks to you in a much, much, much deeper (laughs) level. (laughs) And it goes very, very, very deep. It gets very visual. It goes very deep. But what we might write is that that person hurt me. No. Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's go, let's go way deeper than that. Let's, yeah. let's go how many levels we can go deeper than that. So through all of those exercises, now we can teach people mm-hmm. how to go about expressive writing in a more meaningful way. And so that's, that's, that's one of my passions in life for sure. I'm a lover of words. I'm a lover of conversation. I'm a lover of, of, um, of people being able to express themselves, mm-hmm. you know, and one of the things is, um, and I'm, I've been saying this for a while now, we don't listen anymore. We don't read anymore. We're headliners, you know, we are labelers. Um, and we've, I don't know whether we've just got lazy or made ourselves too busy or we're trying to avoid, but we are not allowing ourselves to have the broader thought or to take something in or to ask a question or to read deeper into what is being said or what's being written. And I think one of the things that uh, if you're going to do expressive writing, one of the things you're going to have to give it is your, is your inner honesty, your outer honesty, but your time. This isn't a quick fix. This isn't you're just going to have a creative writing workshop and hallelujah. It's going to peel back the onions. And you've got to be nurturing of yourself and going through this process. Give the time. You don't know how you peel, but when you peel back the onions, what it's going to reveal or how Mm -hmm. long it's going to take or what impact your words when you're willing to really express them are going to have on you. And each time you do write something, it is like, okay, finished. You know, it is now really look at it. What Mm -hmm. is it really trying to tell you? What can you do with this? How can you take your empowerment back and change the narrative of what you've just expressed into something that's more empowering of you? And we have to be willing to give our time and our effort and stop looking for quick fixes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautifully said. And, and uh, uh, there are... Uh, informal and formal ways in which you can go about doing that, right? Informal and formal ways. Uh, informal ways are just figure it out and sit down and start to write. But yeah, that's easy, but it's not so easy. You know, the other no. way is to get some, <laughs> some type of guided, some kind of guided, um, um, you know, exercises, some kind of, uh, you know, guided instruction um, on format, how, to, how to do that. Yeah, we, we, we need... Um... You know, an orchestra, it doesn't matter how great you're, you're, you are with your instrument. And everybody coming to that orchestra, everybody's great with their instrument. But without the conductor, mm-hmm. knowing how to bring out each instrument and play that music in harmony, you're going to have static. You're going to have chaos and confusion. You're the conductor. You're right. allowing them their, to, for their instrument to be played but you want to play it in a way that it becomes harmonious to them. And so you're giving them instruction on how to do that. Mm -hmm. True. I agreed. And so if there's anybody out there that is interested in exploring this type of therapy, this type of self-therapy, there's endless resources available to, to do so. You could look up um, Dr. Pennebaker, who is kind of the leader in uh, the modern um, e- expressive writing um, world in the 70s, he, he, he ran a study and, and, and kind of approved the be- medical benefits. There's been countless studies since then. But if you just look at benefits of expressive writing, 
or basics of expressive writing, that's a great place to start, right? There, I'm sure that there's tons of master classes, tons of YouTube uh, instructional videos, you know, tons of, you know, online university type stuff. But, you know, we don't often take the time to, to learn how to do something that is, you know, why do I need to learn how to run? Uh, if I'm a human, I should run. You know, like, yeah. you're right. So it, it, it is a little bit of a of a barrier to people to have to go learn how to how to do something that seems like it would be basic. But boy, for especially for anybody troubled by by trauma or anybody who um, who knows that they've had trauma and they want to figure out a way to help get past it or reconcile it and understand it. Um, I would look into expressive writing as a potential solution. Sorry, I have a helicopter over the head of me for some well, reason. Not sure what. Oh, good, I good. Very, very, very glad to hear that. Yeah. I know for myself, you know, I was intimidated because my brother was the um, was the professor and he's the author and he's had a lover of words since the age of six, you know, and so um, I'm dyslectic and uh, didn't finish school. And so, you know, I was intimidated <laughs> that I couldn't write and mm -hmm. I was writing for his ma online magazine and he would correct it. And I said, well, it's great that you're correcting the grammar and the spelling, but you're also taking away the story because I kind of write in a different way. And so he agreed to leave it alone and then was surprised people who reacted to it. And it was the reacting to it because they resonate with it. I'm sharing my story, but it's their story. And I mm -hmm. think that when people do start to write and really allow those layers to come out, a, it becomes something that I know you will do for the rest of your life in some form or other, because getting those words down on paper, reading them, even if you just wrote it, and didn't read it right now and come back to it later, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's your inner self talking to you and um, showing you where you are or showing you how you feel. It's just the writing is such a wonderful process of, of an expressing of oneself in, in whatever way. But it also, as I said, there's many authors I've, I've, um, interviewed and the, you know they've said that when they started writing they weren't quite sure you know what did they want to do but when they finished it and they actually read back what they had written the therapy that it had been to them they um the expression of who they were or what was going on or going through the journey of writing the book to who they are now is something that will stay with them for the rest of their lives Sure. So whether you are a writer or not, I'm not. Come on. I can't spell. <laughs> I've got Grammarly, <laughs> thank God. I'm dyslectic. My words go the wrong way around. Right. But right. it is about let go of any of the, the judgments. Let go of anybody. Oh, you should do this. The, right. You're giving the instructions of how best to bring it out in you. But the pen or the fingers on the keyboard, it, that's you. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. the artist of your own canvas. All you're doing is showing them how to use the brush or which paints are, are best for them. But it's up to them what they paint or what they write. But I promise you, when you do take it and you do start expressing and you do start releasing, you see yourself through the writing where well, you're in discovery of yourself. You're in discovery of yourself through your writing and you discover right, you're so much more. <laughs> And as you're doing that, your over your right ear is self discovery. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> we're doing that game wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's the thing is, I think we are always in self discovery. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, you know, what chapter we're in in our life, it's what's the next chapter? What do I have to discover of who I'm going to be in that chapter? And I think one of the things that we need to keep alive is a wonderment a wonderment of what else is next out there mm -hmm. who else mm -hmm. am i going to be in life you know I, i'm turning 68 this year is life over no you know it right. is like what is that next chapter going to be for me and i'm in discovery of it and i think if we can be in discovery and then as we write and release and we step into that discovery we mm -hmm. realize that you know hey yeah i've become my own conductor Right. But oftentimes people at the point in which they reflect like that in their lives have already figured out who they are and who they're going to be. And that's usually the person that they see standing in the rearview mirror. 
and as opposed to the person that they see standing down the road. And um, I think I'm I think much like you is when I when I think of measuring myself and who I am and who I've become and and who I want to be and and did I live my best life? I don't see the person here. I don't see the person behind me. I see the person down the road. And mm -hmm. and so um you know we can't we can't we can't keep in my mind we, we don't we don't get to that person unless we're doing the work we got to continue right. that to, in to the make now. our way down yeah, yeah. we got to make our way it, it's not like oh i'll become that person one day down the road no yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not you coming to the finish line on the marathon right you got to be at the starting line too you and you've got to be in preparation yeah. <laughs> to run right? yeah. but being yeah. present is tough though yes. because oftentimes um <clears throat> we are limited by the traumas that are in our past we're, mm -hmm. we're oftentimes limited in becoming fully at peace with where we're at right now so that we can take uh you know meaningful connective steps forward because we haven't reconciled the issues in our past and, 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 that's and it's I hard think. to take a step forward if if the you know the the rabbit hole is still trying to suck you down mm -hmm. you know at yeah. some point you've got to put a cap on that rabbit hole i'm not going to go any deeper right and, you know i'm going to rise up i'm going to release i'm you know i'm going to close up this rabbit hole and there again you, you can avoid as much as you like you can blame somebody else as much as you like you know as there's one thing appointed there there's three back on you right this may have happened to you but what are you going to do about it mm -hmm. because it's in your hands of how you heal yourself along with programs like you like you're offering but you still got to be the author of your own page mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you've got to be willing to participate there is no quick app there's no quick anything but you can get through it quicker if you truly immerse yourself in it absolutely totally agree you're speaking my language <laughs> <laughs> you know we all want to kind of get to i mean what is the finish line you know it's um they're not it's not destinations it's just stopping off points mm -hmm. you know when you finish a marathon you feel great and i'm sure you're planning the next one right it's at least like, a day or two later I am. <laughs> exactly <laughs> when the body starts feeling a little better we've just had a guy here in canada um walk the entire of canada and break the record and uh, he he tried to do it the first time but he also at the same time tried to uh, support an organization and that set him back this time he just concentrated on it and everywhere he went people walked with him in that section and his emotion when he got there knowing he'd broken his record he'd broken the record that he had done it right it's just wonderful to see wow yeah that's amazing and i, I love stories like that because um you know um connecting with yourself and mm -hmm. what your goals are and solving your problems or yeah. becoming at peace with your problems um does allow for the the journey to be expanded and you know i, I love this idea of of setting our goals high enough and mm -hmm. and of 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 pushing ourselves to become better than than we are um, uh, but I don't think we, I, I personally just don't believe we can do that unless we yes. take a true assessment of who we are, where we're at, what's limiting us, what's helping us. Let's lean into the things that are helping us. Let's try to fix the things that are limiting mm -hmm. us and let's go, you know, let's go. You don't run a marathon because you just want to run a marathon. You do it because your heart's in it. Yeah. Right. Again, yeah. going back to, if your heart isn't open. Yeah. all the things that you would like to achieve you can't achieve because your heart has to be in it your mm -hmm. heart is your strength it's your compass it's your generator it's your reason why and your heart has to be open and we're scared to open it because of the pain that it's been inflicted on it but if you don't open it and release that pain you will never know what it's like to truly live and love life True. Well, let's get everybody listening an opportunity to do that, right? <laughs> yes. Get them, get them yes. to call up a local organization, do some research on the web, become of a, you know, join. There's there's tons of trauma uh, workshops. There's all this great stuff out there. And if you're, you know, I'm thinking if you're feeling that um, that you'd like to figure out a way to change the conversation with yourself, you know, kind of have your your true 
authentic outside voice connect with that true authentic inside voice and get to know each other a little bit better, bring the inside voice out um, and, and, you know, make some peace with it. There's so many resources out there to do that. And, uh, and there's your like workshop at the beginning. So yeah, you I mean, get, sorry to interrupt you. Like I said, at the beginning that there are, that there, there are measurable therapeutic benefits yeah. and health benefits yes. to it. I vouch for that. Yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, you know, again, um, the stewards, I don't like, I don't like comparing com and competition. Competition is, you know, when you are competing in a sport or something, but not competing with someone else, not comparing with someone else, mm -hmm. because then we always feel less than, right? Yeah. And it's, it is about releasing of oneself and always looking at what if I can, what if I can, mm -hmm. what if I can, what if I try? I don't know what I'm capable of doing until I give it a try. Right. And that goes into releasing your own pain, your own suffering. What mm -hmm. if I looked at you and as I would a friend who you see suffering and you want to be there for that friend until that friend is there for themselves, you're just sure. a Band-Aid, yeah. right? Totally. Totally. So, be that nurturer for yourself. How do people go about doing your workshops? How long are they? You know, what is the program and procedure? So, well, thank you for that. My, my workshops are usually offered through organizations. So um, cancer organizations, trauma, abuse, organ those type of things. Um, it, like we've been talking about, it's not an easy process. Uh -huh. it, it's not, it's, it, it's not a complicated process. It's just not, it's just not easy, right? We got to, we got to, I learn a little bit in order to do it properly. So most of my workshops are uh, three to six, a series of three to six, 90 minute to two hour workshops. So we're Ooh. putting in, you know, nine to, you know, 14, 15 hours of, of exercises and prompts over a period of time in order to develop the skills that allow us to now go off on our private world mm. and do this as a regular practice. So yes. Uh, like any skill, um, you don't need endless hours, but you need some hours to understand the basics and just yeah. kind of jumpstart what what you want. So my, my workshops mostly are through organizations. And so if people want to reach out to you and find out which organization you're at, yeah. they can get hold of you through your site or how? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, through my, uh, on my website, uh, you know, where I, where I, you know, talk about my books and all the different events that I do and um, public speaking and that type of stuff. I have information about my expressive writing workshops. And if anybody wants to learn anything, I, 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 I'm kind of connected in this area of trauma and um, self-care. So I can direct you possibly to, uh, to an organization in your area and, or in the virtual world, uh, any organization that might be aligned with kind of the issues that you're dealing with or can give you um, uh, fellow uh, community members that are experiencing or have experienced mm -hmm. some of the similar things that you have so that you can know that you're not alone in going through this this journey of self-healing. So I'd love to connect people. If, if you want, just reach out to me. I'm very responsive to, uh, to contacting. And your website is? It is cycleoflives.org. So cycleoflives.org. And you've written two books, Winning in the Middle of the Pack and also Cycle of Lives, which we covered yes. last time. Those two are not industry specific or fitness related or other. These are books for more than, you know, you know generally. And, and, and they can find uh, those books wherever books are sold or on my website. Uh, Cycle of Lives is a great book about 15 people's emotional journeys with cancer. And I kind of interweave those stories with my uh, cross country bike ride and talk about the people I met along the way um, in between bringing these really inspiring um, evocative stories of people and how they have or haven't sometimes overcome the traumas in their lives that allow them or sometimes prevent them from forming these deep meaningful conversations with people. I wrote that book so that we could all learn how to start hard conversations with people that are going through trauma. I'm winning in the middle of the pack is a story of some of the things that we talked about, which is especially when you mentioned um, comparing uh, ourselves. It's kind of a book where in the middle of the pack, you know, continuing the marathon analogy, you know, uh, who doesn't want to see who's going to 
win the marathon. Everybody's like, oh, who's going to win that thing? And also, isn't it kind of fun to watch like the last person crossing, right? <laughs> uh, the first and the last, they get all the attention and everybody's watching, but everybody else in between, nobody's watching. And so this winning in the middle of the pack idea is most of us are in the middle of the pack. Well, why not um, worry about what we think about ourselves? Because nobody's really watching. So so yes. stop worrying about who 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 to compare yourself to, what people think about you. None of that really matters. What matters is what you think about yourself and and what you're trying to accomplish in the world. So that's what winning in the middle of the pack discusses. The old conversation with yourself of why are you doing it? Yeah. Right? If you're not yeah. first and you're not last and you're not getting the adulation, you're doing it for yourself. Why? Why? Yeah. What are you but, trying but to get out of, of it? Yeah. And it's also kind of freeing to to mm -hmm. to come to the, the realization because it's very empowering to know that because I, I think we a lot of us live, live our lives wondering, hey, what's this person think about mm -hmm. me or what, what does my boss think about me or do I need to do this so that this person gives me more opportunity? And we're always thinking that other people are measuring us, you know, that, 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 that we have to like worry about what they're thinking about. Yeah. In the reality, nobody cares. Like nobody's watching. They're living their own lives. So, so why not just worry about, about what you think about yourself? And so I, I love that, that concept. It's like the guy that's just run Canada. He's done it a couple of times and this, this time he did it and he did it for yeah. himself. He did it for himself, not anyone right. else. Right. And it's that the achievement of breaking the record, all wonderful, but it was, he did it for him. Yeah. Yeah. And that impact of, you have no idea of when you do something that means something to you, that, you know, for you, of the, the impact you're going to have on someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, we think, oh, this is my achievement. I've achieved this. And then somebody else knows your story or knows what you achieved and it becomes their inspiration right and their invitation to go well what mm -hmm. else you know if he can do that surely i can right yep. that's really what life is about let's inspire other people to believe they can mm -hmm. because we can Absolutely. but first we you know we we've, we've got to do some housekeeping <laughs> yeah i love it well it's wonderful wonderful talking with you Sarah. It all uh, you know it's, it's always great to hear you talking because you do um you do bring a great, fresh, optimistic perspective. And I, and I love the idea of self-discovery because, you know, I mean, if we're not here to learn, what are we here for? Who know? I, I've never met anybody that knows everything, but I've met a lot of people that think they know. Everything. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so and if you know everything, then what's, what is there else to discover? I mean, life is not discovery, everything. right? They don't know everything. Yeah. Not, there, there's, there's nobody that knows everything, but a lot of people think they do. I, I'd rather be in the camp that is, uh, let's discover what we don't know. Precisely, because there's always something wonderful to yep. discover. So the cycle of lives.org, that is C-Y-C-L-E-O-F-L-I-V-E-S.org. You'll catch everything there, his books. Please, as I said, do go back and listen to his previous show. Um, lots of beautiful, juicy nuggets in there as well. Thank you for coming back again. Um, I really do believe in the work that you're doing here with the writing. I know it's therapeutic. I mm -hmm. know it's releasing. And I also know that once you get to writing, whether you're writing for yourself or anyone else, it is something, it's, it's a companion. It's a companion. It's your inner voice speaking to you that keeps you on track, that allows you to keep expressing and not bottling up. But it's also sometimes a beautiful you know, your, your dreams and your desires are down on paper. And then it is like, well, you know what? I can, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can. And the more we can say, I can, I just need to learn how, right? I can, doesn't mean you know immediately how, but right. okay, I can, I can do this. I just need to know how. Well, and the how then apply. We, can, we can help with, if anybody wants help, just reach out to me through that, through that information and I'll, and I'll direct you to resources or, try to point you point you to some place that might help you with the how. Yes. And folks, nobody can help you until you're willing to help yourself. So please do, because you are worth it. And when you're willing to go through this journey and come out the other side, you truly understand how beautifully flawsome you really are. <laughs> Thanks so much, David, for being with us here again. You're welcome, Sarah. Have a great one. You too. Until next time, folks, remember, you're so much more than you think you are. Bye for now. 
We hope that you enjoyed the show. Find all of our shows on selfdiscoverymedia.com under podcasts or selfdiscoverymedia slash shows. And for all our current shows, go to What's New. We are supported by you, the audience. You will see a nice big shiny blue button for one-time donations or follow us on Patreon and you will be able to support us there. We enjoy bringing you such wisdom. And the next show will be up in just a moment. <music>